You wanna know what's not been getting enough attention on this channel? Daba. Yeah, we haven't been giving poor old Daba enough love. So today, we're gonna be doing some musical with Java. Very nice. Hello everybody, I'm Karara, and today we're going to be doing a musical walkthrough where I go through a problem for the first time and show you guys how my thought process works when I'm approaching sol pro problems, I know how to speak. And today we're going to be using Java specifically. Sorry I couldn't get a video out on Wednesday because my power was out and some nonsense, I couldn't really record a video. So sorry about that, but we're back in business! Alright, so what do we got today? Today we got the musical 2017 January Contest Bronze, don't be last! Alrighty, let's see. Farmer John owns seven dairy cows. What other type of cows are there like? What? Dairy? Oh, are there like cheese cows? No, wait, that's also dairy. What? This is so confusing. Damn. Slightly redundant, you used to go just saying. Bessie, Elsie, and Daisy, and Gertie, and Annabelle, Maggie, and Henrietta. He milks them every single day and keeps detailed records on the amount of milk provided by each cow during each milking session. Not surprisingly, Farmer John highly prizes cows that provide large amounts of milk. Cows, being lazy creatures of course, if you didn't know that, they're lazy creatures, don't necessarily want to be responsible for producing too much milk. If it were up to them, they would each be perfectly content to be the lowest producing cow in the entire herd. However, they keep hearing Farmer John mentioning the phrase, farm to table, with his human friends, and while they don't quite understand what it means, they have suspicion that it might actually may not be the best idea to be the cow producing the least amount of milk. Instead, they figure it's safer to be in the position of producing the second smallest amount of milk in the herd. Please help the cows figure out which of them currently occupies this desirable position. Wait a minute, isn't it just like sort it and then print it out? Wait, okay so it starts with N, so that gives the number of cows in the milking log, and then each of the following N lines contains the name of a cow followed by a positive integer, indicating the amount of milk produced by the cow during one of its milking sessions. Any cow that does not appear in the log at all is assumed to have produced no milk. So then we have to produce the name of the cow that has the second smallest amount of milk. So if several cows tie or no cow has the second minimum, then we output the word tie. Okay, so literally the n is only 100, so we can literally use n squared, n to the cubed, n four. so like, it doesn't even matter what algorithm we use, honestly. So this shouldn't be hard at all, hopefully, hopefully. Okay, let, let's just go through this sample a bit. I don't even think we need like a, I think this is open Photoshop. We gotta, we, we'll, we'll work through this. So the first thing we see is that we have ten things in our entry log, right? So we just go from one to n. We start with Bessie one. So we say, hey, Bessie got one cup of milk, and then Maggie gets thirteen. Bessie, what are you doing? Only one cup of milk compared to Maggie's thirteen. Disappointing. Disappointing. All right, and then Elsie gets three, and then she gets four. So that means she does seven total so far. And then Henrietta has four. Then Gertie has 12, Daisy has 7, Annabelle has like 10, Bessie has another 6, okay there we go Bessie, bringing it up, 7, and then Henrietta has another 5, so we have 9. So let me just look at who has the second least, so we have B, E, and D all have 7, but Henrietta has 9, so she's the second most. Wait, but we're given that Farmer John only has 7 cows, right? So basically we just go through the thing, we add up their total amount of milk, and then at the very end, we sort it, and then take the second most, right? That seems like a decent idea, right? So if we sort this, for example, we get... And then we just go... Alright, we're at the min right now. We go to the next. Oh wait, it's still the min, so we had to go to the next. Oh, that's still the min, what? So then we had to go to the next one. And then, it's no longer the min. So then, all we gotta do, is we gotta print out Henrietta. If A was like 9, if this was 9, we would go to the next one and check. Oh shoot, there's another 9? That's horrible! So we print out tied instead. If all of these guys were like 7, and we never reached the second most, then we would print out tied as well. So I think the hardest part of this problem is actually like storing these names, right? And how much milk they have, because Bessie, like how do you store a string and then map it to an actual integer? We could use a map, right? But like, I don't know, maps... Well, I think that would be the easiest thing, right? You know, why don't we just do that? So basically our strategy, oh, but you can't sort maps, can you? Okay, so if we can't sort maps, how else can we do this? Why haven't we just like went through it and kept track of the min and the second min? So we start with A, right? And then we say, A, right now, so far, the only thing that is our min right now would be 10. Our min would be 10. And our second min would just be nothing because we haven't had like something that could possibly be the second min. 
But then we go to 7, right? And 7 is less than 10. We don't have a second minion. Okay. Wait up. Let me, la let me label it. First min and second min. So now, this 10 gets kicked out. We just food it out over here. And now, our second min becomes 10. And our first min becomes 7. Which makes sense, right? Between A and B, B has a 7, which is the min, and 10, and A has a 10, which is the second min. But then we go to M is 13, and we're like, it's not less than the first min, so it can't be our first min, and it's not less than the second min, so it can't be our second min, so this is just useless, we don't do anything now. And then we go to F. Well, blammo. Alright, F is just equal to our first min, so that doesn't change anything. H is greater than our first min, so that doesn't change our first min, but it is smaller than our second min. So then we gotta change our second min because 10 is no longer a second min, 9 is. And then we go through it and we see that G doesn't change anything because it's greater than a second min and first min, and D is greater than a second min and first min. So just by going through it once, we basically found the first and second min. So basically the strategy is, we go through our list of milk logs, we find the total number for each cow, and then by going through the array once, then we're able to find the first and second min. And then we can just go through the whole thing again, and check if there's more than one thing equal to the second min. Or, what we could do, is we could also just count how many are in each. So we could say, count f. So this would just be one, and because we only have one cow that has the second most, then we just print out Henrietta. Very cool. So let's code this bad boy. So first thing first, we include our read-in stuff. Alrighty, so now we have our reader-in thingamajiggers, and then to read stuff in, we just do this. So we first have to read in our int n, we can say int n is equal to sco.next int. And then we want to hash map between our name and our actual integer. So we make a hash map. Alright, we got our milk produced hash map. And then we just for loop through all of our entries and see how much we're getting. So we read in our name and our milk, and then we put stuff in our hash map. We do milk produced dot put. Let us look how the hash map does its stuff. Okay, hash map job. Alright, so basically we could do get, and then we could get or default looks useful because if it doesn't have any milk already, then we just set it to zero, right? And then we want to put stuff, we want to put stuff in our map. So we do dot put, we want to put the name, we want to associate the name with the amount of milk, right? And then we do milk produced, and we want to get its current milk and add the new amount of milk to its current milk. And there we go. Now, when we're done with this for loop, milk produced should exactly include how much milk each cow produced. Now we're gonna use our algorithm that we devised in our Photoshop. So we first keep track of our first min, our second min, and then we also wanna keep track of which one has the second min. And lastly, we wanna count how many people have the second min. Alrighty, so now that we have all this, we basically go through our hash map and we basically check whether or not they have the second or first min. So, so in order to loop through all the names that we have, let's just make an array that includes all the names so that we don't have to like manually write out the loop for each name we want to do. So, let's make a string array. All right, what are the names of these troll cows? Okay, we got Bessie, Elsie, Daisy, Gertie, Annabelle, Maggie, and Henrietta. Whoops, I gotta add in my quotes. All right, very epic. We got all our names, now we gotta loop through the names and then do our algorithm on all these names. So, for string name in, well we already used names. Oh no we didn't, string name in name. So basically name will be set to each of them. It'll first be Bessie, then it'll be Elsie, then it'll be Daisy, then it'll be Gertie, etc. And we say int milk is equal to milk get. So now we have the amount of milk that the cow that we want produced. And we gotta check, is it less than first min? If it is, then first min gets bumped to second min, and are we set our first min to what we have right now. Wait, this brings up a good point, because once we bump something to our second min, we might have like multiple of them, right? So we also had to keep track of our first count. And we also had to keep track of the name, because it might get bumped. And we should also put f min as negative one, because all the cows are gonna have greater than zero. So if we put zero, none of them would have less than f min, and that would just mess everything up. So. Let us see. So if milk is less than f min or f min is equal to negative one, meaning we didn't set it yet, we set f min equal, we set second min to f min, we set second count to f count, we set second to first, and then once we transfer everything to the second version, we now make all our first min stuff correct. And if it's less than f min, right, we don't want to like look at anything else. We're done with this name. 
So we're just gonna click continue. And basically what that'll do is it'll skip everything else in the for loop and just go to the next name. But if it's not less than f min, we wanna check if it's less than second min. Or if s min is negative one, then we basically just replace s min with everything. And then we gotta add a continue over here. And then one last thing is that we had to check whether or not they're equal so that we could increment the count. Very epic. So basically if milk is equal to the one of the mins, then we just add the count for that. And then at the very end, we are like, if our count is equal to one, meaning we only have one second minner, and our second min is not equal to negative one, but meaning we actually have a second min, then we print out the name that we found. However, if we do have any of those cases not satisfied, then we print out tie. All right, very nice. This should work. Oh, wait a minute, I'm trolling. This is not C++. Okay, we got user buffered writer. Don't forget your bw.close and this should work. Let us make a file called, what is it? Not last.in. Let us put in the sample input and let us test this. Hold up. I know how to write semicolons, I swear. Whoops, a couple more bugs that I didn't fix. So here over here, we gotta have a file writer in front of the new file. So that's one thing. And then we also gotta initialize these to some default value. All right, let's check our not last dot out. Oh, whoops, forgot. It's had, okay, it's printing out. All right, it's printing out Henrietta, that's good. Why is it printing out tied two? Let's see. Oh, whoops. If it gets to here, then we just, like, we had to put it else here, because we don't want to just do both. All right, let's check it again. Very epic, let's go. We did it. All right, let's, oh. Uh, well, let's not get too comfortable, because we actually got to submit it. Wait, is there an end line at the end? Oh, shoot, there's no end line. Wait, let's add an end line. All right, now we got an end line. Now we're good. All right, let's download this and submit. Java. All right, main. And, okay, hold up, did we miss a case? Okay, I think we missed a case. Well, I should probably turn on the light, whoops. All right, there we go, we have turned on the light successfully. All right, let's make sure we read this properly. So, if M is the minimum total amount of milk, then we print the minimum, okay. If several cows tie, or if no cows, then we print the tie word, okay. And then, yeah. Oh, I'm trolling. I read, put tied, very nice, very nice. Tie, okay. There's a big difference between tied and tie. All right, let's try that again. Oh, we're not doing C++? Wait up. Job. Epic gameplay. We did it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that. This was something a little bit different from my normal C++ musical crash courses. Wanted to change it up a bit because different languages are important and like Java is a pretty common one. Most of the people who do Yusako and are like learning it for the first time will probably be using Java. So here you guys go. Even though this problem, like the actual algorithm wasn't that hard, the main thing is like learning how to store the things and use hash maps and that kind of stuff. So hopefully this taught you something new about how to use hash maps. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys so much for watching again, and see you guys next time.